Have you ever heard of Vito, the Don Genovese, the infamous American mafia boss who gained power during the Prohibition era? His story is full of brutality, deceit, and trickery. Genovese was a major contributor to the Castella Maurice War and the rise of organized crime in the U.S. He rose to the top of the Luciano crime family and expanded the heroin trade internationally. But did you know that he was also involved in a card game trick that led to murder? And that he escaped to Italy with $750,000 in cash to avoid being accused of murdering one of his associates? In this video, we will explore the brutal true story of Vito the Don Genovese and how he got tricked. Stick around until the end to find out why his story is one of the most captivating in American history. Due to his close relationship with Lucky Luciano, Vito Genovese gained strength and influence within the American Mafia during the Prohibition era. He was a major contributor to the Castella Marie's War and the rise of organized crime in the U.S. He eventually rose to the top of Luciano's crime family, which later adopted his name to become the Genovese family. Genovese helped Luciano expand the heroin trade internationally and served as a mentor to Vincent Gigante, who later rose to the position of crime boss for the Genovese family. On November 21st, 1897, Genovese, when 15 years old, moved from his birthplace of Resigliano, a fraction in the commune of Tofino, in the province of Naples, to Little Italy in Manhattan. He began by performing tasks for mob bosses while on the run and robbing pushcart vendors. However, when he was 19 years old, he was sentenced to a year in prison for illegally possessing a firearm after collecting money from people participating in illegal lotteries. Vito Genovese began working for Joe Masseria in the 1920s. Masseria was the head of a significant gang in Manhattan that would later develop into the family that Genovese would lead. For the same. They established their own bootlegging operation with the aid of Frank Costello, Genovese, and Rothstein. But as hostilities between Salvatore Maranzano, Masseria's fierce rival, grew, the Castella Marais War broke out in the early 1930s. Luciano consented to plan Masseria's murder and take over as Maranzano's second-in-command in exchange for Masseria's rackets. Masseria was executed in a Coney Island restaurant after being lured there by Luciano for a meeting. Later, at a meeting in Maranzano's office, Genovese and Luciano also plotted the murder of Maranzano, which a group of Jewish gangsters carried out. Genovese lost his first wife to tuberculosis in 1931 in the midst of these events. Then he declared his desire to wed Anna Petilia, who was already Gerard Barnadico's wife. On March 16th, Genovese was later discovered dead on a Manhattan rooftop, and on March 28th, Anna, his cousin through Anna's mother, married him. Genovese is also thought to have been involved in the 1934 murder of Ferdinand Bakcha, whom he wanted to trick in a card game. Genovese made the decision to have Bakcha killed rather than pay the $35,000 demanded from him. On September 19, 1934, Genovese and five other people allegedly shot Bakcha in a Brooklyn coffee shop. After Charles Lucky Luciano was put behind bars in 1936, Vito Genovese assumed control of the Luciano crime family in an acting capacity. Genovese, however, escaped to Italy in 1937 with $750,000 in cash to avoid being accused of murdering Bakcha, one of his associates. He bought off some fascist party members while he was in Italy and grew close to Mussolini's son-in-law, Galeazzo Ciano. It is even speculated that he provided Ciano with cocaine. In exchange for his assistance in establishing a new fascist party headquarters in Nola, Genovese received a commendatorship of the Order of Saints Maurice and Lazarus and donated millions of dollars to Mussolini's fascist party during World War II. Former business partner of Genovese, Ernest the Hawk Rapolo, accused him of killing Baksha in New York in 1944. In order to avoid being accused of murder, Rapolo decided to cooperate with the government as a witness. In August of that same year, while looking into Genovese's involvement in an Italian drug ring, U.S. military police detained him for stealing trucks, flour, and sugar from the Army. Agent Orange C. Dickey of the Criminal Investigation Division learned that Genovese was sought after for the 1934 slaying of Baksha during the course of his investigation. The Army and the federal government despite Dickey's efforts to bring him to justice, appeared uninterested. Dickey finally got Genovese back to New York for trial after months of trying. Genovese, however, threatened him and offered him $250,000 in exchange for his release. Dickey persisted even after his superiors advised him not to pursue the case. On June 2, 1945, Genovese was charged with murder for the 1934 Baksha killing, and the Department of Justice was given the case. On June 10, 1946, the charges were, however, dropped for lack of proof. Genovese would have been found guilty, according to Judge Samuel. Leibovich, if there had been any proof. Following Genovese's release from custody, there was a power struggle within the Luciano crime family. Costello and Moretti resisted him despite his efforts to seize control of the family. The Havana Conference, held in December 1946, brought together the heads of the major crime families to talk about topics like the heroin trade, gambling in Cuba, and the Flamingo Hotel plan. 
Genovese proposed that Luciano assume the title of the titular boss of bosses during a private meeting in his hotel suite so that Genovese could have complete control. Luciano declined the offer, though, and forbade Genovese from bringing it up once more unless he decided to reconsider. Costello was made underboss after Moretti was killed on October 4, 1951, by the Mafia Commission because of his unsatisfactory testimony during the crucial forever hearings and his deteriorating mental state. Genovese rose to the position of capo within his old Greenwich Village crew. Anna Genovese sued her husband in December 1952 in an effort to get financial support. This was the first instance of a mob wife bringing up her husband's past crimes in court. Vito countersued for abandonment and demanded $350 in payment each week. The claims made by Anna that Vito ran the Italian lottery in New York and New Jersey and earned more than $1 million annually were denied in 1954 by the New Jersey Superior Court Appellate Division. Carlo Gambino, Genovese, and Anastasia's assistant plotted Costello's murder in the middle of the 1950s. Genovese gave Vincent Giganti the order to shoot and hurt Costello in front of his apartment building on May 2, 1957. By arguing that Giganti was unable to identify his attacker in court, Costello cleared Giganti of an attempted murder. Genovese became the head of the Genovese crime family, and Anthony Strallo, a longtime subordinate, was given the title of underboss. Anastasia's murder was allegedly ordered in 1957 by Genovese and Gambino. This was a result of Anastasia allegedly working with Costello to seize control of the government. On October 25, 1957, two men wearing scarves murdered Anastasia in a barber shop inside the Park Central Hotel in Manhattan. In November 1957, Genovese organized a meeting of the Italian and American Mafia at Joseph Barber's estate in Appalachian, New York, to demonstrate his power. However, state trooper Edgar D. Croswell became suspicious of the gathering after noticing several expensive vehicles at the estate that were registered to known criminals. When the police arrived, many mob members fled on foot and by car. Although Genovese was present at the gathering, he was released after claiming to be there for a barbecue and business with Barber. Genovese was subpoenaed to testify at the Senate McClellan hearings on organized crime on June 2, 1958. However, he refused to answer any questions, citing the Fifth Amendment 150 times. Luciano is believed to have helped a Puerto Rican drug dealer receive a share of $100,000 in order to frame Genovese. As a result, Genovese was charged with conspiring to import and sell drugs on July 7, 1958. Genovese was found guilty of this charge on April 4, 1959, and was sentenced to 15 years in the Atlanta Federal Penitentiary on April 17. Despite being imprisoned, he still tried to control his crime family. In April 1962, Genovese ordered the killing of Anthony Strallo after concluding that he was involved in the conspiracy that led to his imprisonment. Strallo disappeared on April 8th after leaving his home for a walk and was never found. As we come to the end of this video, we hope you were as captivated by the brutal and complex story of Vito the Don Genovese as we were. From his early years as a street thug to his rise to the top of the Luciano crime family, Genovese's story is one of power, violence, and deceit. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the brutal true story of Vito the Don Genovese. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more content like this.